All right, so guys, we've now gone over how to, or how government here in Canada, right, the federal government, how they create laws, right, how bills become laws. We've looked at that very intricate process, right, the multiple readings, laws in the House of Commons being passed on to the Senate, uh, and then the Senate going through the same process, first reading, second reading, third reading, committee, all those kinds of things, and then royal assent, boom, it becomes a law. Now, there's one part of the legislative process that we did not look at yet and that is the uh the influence of lobbying when it comes to the laws that are made in our house of commons right in our federal government um so first of all look this right here this is the gold standard guys right this combines two things that i love cats and memes so anytime i can find a cat meme that applies to what we're looking at check you know what's going to happen so anyways guys um before we even look at how lobbyists affect legislation we should talk about what a lobbyist is okay now first of all guys lobbyists can be uh just regular citizens who are trying to ensure that laws that are made are what they want to see and there's also professional lobbyists and while people who aren't throwing money and trying to influence legislation uh you know people who are not professionals right who are you know volunteers or just concerned citizens while they may have a little bit of say in the laws that are passed in our federal government i would argue it is the professional lobbyist that we really need to not worry about, but be aware of, and maybe worry about. Although I'll be honest, there's a lot of steps and things that exist here in Canada, uh, like the Lobbying Act, like the Federal Accountability Act, which prevent Canadian politics from becoming like what we see in the United States of America, where it's a free for all when it comes to lobbying. And you'll learn more about that in Social 30. So anyways, guys, let's define what a lobbyist is. So simply put, guys, as it says on the screen here, uh, a professional lobbyist is a person who represents a particular cause, right? Like wetlands preservation, uh, mothers who oppose drinking and driving, uh, oil producers, chicken farmers, and even restaurateurs. So they are, uh, a lobbyist is a person who represents a particular cause and attempts to influence legisl legislation, sorry, to be favorable to their particular cause, and they get paid to do it. So in essence, guys, what a lobbyist is, is an influence peddler. They're an attempted influence peddler. Now, guys, they're lobbyists that represent every possible issue that you could think of, right? Like Ducks Unlimited, right? Which is a pretty benign lobbying group, right? They, they are sort of they're they're the ones who want to make sure that wetlands are preserved right that uh those natural filters in our hydrologic system um are preserved and not just developed over right um there's mothers against drinking and driving right or drunk driving and you know they want to make sure that the penalties for drunk driving are severe um i've actually had a former student of mine get killed by a drunk driver and that just happened this past summer and it broke my heart um and it turns out and found out yesterday actually on the news that the individual who um killed her uh and another young man that was driving with her uh was drunk right the man was in his 40s and he was driving drunk um so anyways mad tries to influence government when it comes to like the uh, highway traffic safety act and things like that um and the canadian criminal code are very harsh when it comes to driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs and then there's what i would argue are sort of less benign lobbying groups right there's the canadian association of petroleum producers or cap and guys the whole point of any corporate lobbying whether it is cap whether it's the cfc right the chicken farmers of canada yes that's a lobby group or restaurants canada also lobby group the whole point of these professional lobby groups that represent corporations uh, and big business is to ensure that laws that are made are not going to be harmful to profit making period 
period. That's all professional lobbying cares about from an industry perspective, right? They want to make sure that these corporations make as much money as possible. So a person who engages in this activity is known as a lobbyist. So lobbyists engage in lobbying, oddly enough. Uh, and guys, there's a couple of videos here. Uh, one is an American video that talks about lobbying. Watch it, okay? Whether it's lobbying going on here in Alberta, whether it's lobbying going on in Georgia, in the case of the Peach State, um, or the federal government uh, in Canada or the United States, lobbying's all the same, right? These lobbyists try to influence government to make sure that they get what the corporations that they're representing want. All right, so there's video one right there. And then there's another video about lobbying as well. Watch the videos, guys. Lots of videos here to give context to what we're looking at, okay? Now, important because lobbyists are paid by corporations to represent them and make sure the laws that are passed are in their business interests. Um, beginning in 2006, the federal government recognized the danger, or not, maybe not danger, but the ability for lobbyists to greatly influence the legislative process. So two important acts have been passed here by the federal government. And the first one happened in 2006, and it's called the Federal Accountability Act, or the FedAA, as it's sometimes known as. And in the Federal Accountability Act, guys, very clearly it says, uh, the aim of it was to reduce the opportunity to exert influence with money by banning corporate union and large personal political donations. So in effect, guys, what the Fed AA did is it set limits on how much uh, a lobbyist can actually give to a political candidate. And that's good. Why? Because in the United States... Uh, after what's known as the Citizens United Supreme Court case in the U.S., they ruled that for government to do this, to create laws which actually ban how much one person can spend on lobbying or how much uh, a person can spend on lobbying a political candidate, it's actually a denial of expression, right? Wrap your brain around that for a sec the Supreme Court of the United States said to not allow a lobbyist to give as much money as they want to a political candidate. It's a denial of one's First Amendment right of expression and speech. And from this, guys, comes the idea in American politics now that money equals speech, which is a crazy idea. So what does that mean for average citizens like you or I, who's not a rich corporation that can give out millions of dollars to lobbying groups to influence legislation? Well, it means essentially you have no voice. Now, thankfully, guys, that is not the case in Canada. Here in Canada, the maximum that any one individual uh, as a an individual citizen or as a lobbyist can give is $1,100. And corporations, unions, and organizations are banned from contributing to political parties and candidates. Now, why is that? Because our federal system doesn't want to see the uh, corporations and unions and other organizations which have deep pockets basically buying candidates. Because if candidates are in the pocket of corporations or unions or any other moneyed entity, well, then they just become a puppet of what those corporations want. And again, it's about the will of the people, not the will of the corporation. And that's important, right? And then, guys, um, gifts that are given um, over $500 have to be reported. So that's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. So these two political cartoons that we see on the page here um, are American-based cartoons, right, thankfully. And you can see all these different corporate lobbyists lining up with their bags of money to try to influence uh, a subcommittee uh, in Congress, right, in their federal government regarding uh, the federal budget. And you got Wall Street, which is incredibly moneyed, right, trillions and trillions of dollars, um, arms 
corporations, right? Arms merchants, oil, uh, agriculture or ag business, foreign lobbying, right guys? You have all these individuals that are trying to influence the legislative process to make sure it's what they want. Meanwhile, the average taxpayer who has very little in the form of money, right? Like our, our personal economic power will never equal that of corporations. It just won't, right? And they are basically sort of left out naked in the dark, right? Another one, you guys all know sort of the metaphor of like the, the wishing well, right? Or the wishing pond, the wishing fountain. So here we have, you know, average American citizens kind of tossing in their coin, trying to make sure that Congress, the American government does what they want. And then you have this guy in a suit, no doubt representing corporate lobbying, who is just pouring the money in there and who's going to get what they want the average citizen or the corporate lobbyist right now uh 2008 we had a second piece of legislation um created by the federal government called the lobbying act and again it it looked at certain aspects of lobbying and let's quickly look at what it said here. So uh, there's four key principles and one of them directly um, directly addresses the issue of lobbying. So it says, uh, it is desirable that public office holders and the general public be able to know who is engaged in lobbying. Oh, and I should have mentioned up above with the Federal Accountability Act, it also banned um, former civil servants from becoming lobbyists as soon as they were done in government, right? So guys, remember, uh, in an election, there's the possibility that you might not get voted in again. You could lose your job, right? And you still have major connections as an individual who's been in government, whether you are a former, you know, member of parliament, whether you're a member of the legislative assembly here in Alberta, right? You have a lot of connections and those connections will be used by individuals um, in corporations. They'll try to entice you to become a corporate lobbyist so that they can capitalize on those connections that you have from your former government job, right? The people you know, the things you know, those are all valuable to those corporations. But the Fed AA bans these individuals who used to work for government from becoming paid lobbyists for the span of five years. Now, after five years, they can, but a lot can change in politics after five years, right? So I apologize about not mentioning that. All right. So um, Lobbying Act, guys, uh, again, it it basically, it, it, it makes sure that people who are lobbyists actually have to register with government. Now, this is kind of cool. There's actually a lobbying database here in Canada. If you click on this link, and I made it a link, it will take you to this website right here, the Office of the Commissioner of Lobbying of Canada. And guys, if you go into it, and I took a screenshot of it for you, you will find that there's 6,279 paid lobbying groups here in Canada. Right there's 6,279 organizations that lobby government on every single issue you could possibly think of. It is ridiculous, right? It is ridiculous. So 6,279 lobbyists, um, and there's only 338 members of parliament. So that's an average of 19 lobbyists for every one MP in Ottawa. So do you think that there's a lot of influence? Uh, and pressure that MPs face in order to um, sort of satisfy the needs and wants of these corporate lobbyists? Absolutely. So follow the money, guys. Let's look at who are the biggest lobbyists here in Canada. And we got a Jerry Maguire meme there, right? Most of you probably have no idea what this is talking about. Show it to your parents, though. They'll appreciate it. Um, so guys, this article is from 2012. It's from McLean's Magazine, right? Uh, and it shows who are the at most active lobbyists here in Canada. And if you actually have a look at the article, you'll find that big oil, big finance, like banking, uh, big beef, big mining, and big chicken, right? So basically the largest industries in Canada are also the most 
uh, active when it comes to lobbying, trying to um, control legislation and make sure that it is what they want. So another quote from me, guys. Wealthy people will use their wealth, clout, and connections to ensure their position of privilege and power using any legal means, and yes, sometimes even illegal means. Um, so guys, look, I'm, I'm warning you to make sure that you vote in elections because your vote has more power than the influence of lobbyists but if you don't vote the influence of lobbyists becomes even greater right make sure guys that you don't let these moneyed financial interests take over our political system because i guarantee you they're also lobbying to try to change the fed aa to raise that limit of one thousand one hundred dollars so that it becomes more so like the american system where the amount of money that lobbyists can give to politicians is un limited and we don't want that here in Canada. We don't want our government to be beholden to specific financial or economic or business interests. We just don't want that. We want government to be by the people, of the people, for the people. That's very important, not by the corporation, of the corporation, for the corporation, right? I don't want to see Banff National Park become Banff National Park brought to you by Walmart, right? And I guarantee Walmart, if they could lobby government to have it become that, they absolutely would, right? They absolutely would. I don't want to see, well, I mean, look at, look at, I mean, guys, corporations are everywhere, right? So anyways, um, make sure you read the important takeaways. Um, and that's lobbying, guys, right? So again, key takeaway here is lobbying is not all bad, but some of it, I would argue, is definitely motivated by profit. And sometimes profit is contrary to what we the people actually want to see happen. Okay. So anyways, keep rolling. Keep going. You're doing awesome. Um, take it easy.